Yo, what is going on everyone? It is Absolved, and in today's video, we are going to be watching and reacting to Scott John's video, Should Map Offerings Even Exist Anymore? As always, liking the video and subscribing helps me produce more daily videos like these. You can also check out the Twitch stream in the description below. Anyway, let's get into it. Hey guys, Scott here. Today I want to talk about map offerings and how I don't really think they have a place in Dead by Daylight anymore. They are sort of a relic of the early stages of the game where you only had like three realms to choose from, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. You were probably going to get one of those anyway, so it's it's just sort of like, like I said, it's a relic of an earlier version of the game, sort of like the lighting offerings and, um, you know, just everything that used to be in the ver very first versions of the game. But all right, so back when the game first came out, I'm going to add to that. So back when the game first came out, there weren't very many offerings. There were the, like the blood point offerings and whatnot. There were the map offerings, the mist offerings, and the moonlight offerings. And that was in the very early era of Dead by Daylight when a lot of people would play in a very stealthy manner. That was before like looping really started to exist as it was known, as it is known today. Uh, so back then you would have a lot of people running like darkest moonlight which would make the map incredibly dark like to the point where it was almost impossible to see it was like this like black filter put over the screen and people would run mist and hide because that's how the game was played all those years ago and as well back then there was only like i believe three maps right you know like three realms being the auto haven mcmillan and the corn maps those were it back then so only having three options it wasn't really that much of a problem so it was a relic of a very old and bygone era of dead by daylight and considering they haven't really touched offerings in the last, uh, god, at all, like, they've touched Mortys, right? But have they really touched, like, offerings or added anything new besides basement offerings and, like, having the basement spawn and the hatch spawn at shack and basement? Really, no. Like, offerings as a whole have kind of been, like, just a forgotten about relic as the years have gone on. In modern DVD, um, they're just, they're just straight up unfair. They are a primarily survivor-sided offering mechanic that pretty much exclusively benefits survivors, and that's not really fair. Now, there's a couple exceptions. Now, that is true. A wide majority of the maps in the game typically tend to sway on the side of survivor, right? Like, most maps generally have, you know, that people will run an offering for. Like, people will run an Ormond offering, and they'll stick by the building. They know it's a fairly big map, and the building is still pretty strong. They'll run a map like that, just as an example. They'll run the game because they know there's a ton of pallets, and... Unless you're a killer like Leatherface or Demogorgon, you can't really shred through those pallets. You have to manually go around and kick every single one of those pallets, and almost every pallet on maps like those are completely safe. So that's another thing as well. There is like, you know, uh, Burning Alary's offering as Myers, for example, or Burning Midwitch as Nurse, or any map offering as Nurse. Um, so there's a couple of examples where a killer can actually benefit from it, but for the most part, it's going to be the survivors that benefit from it, and I think that makes it unfair. A lot of the, like, killer-sided maps, and I say killer-sided very loosely, maps that I should say were overall some of the most fair to play were typically Autohaven keys. The Autohaven maps were usually pretty fair, all things considered. The likes of Wrecker's Yard probably being the most idealized version of a perfectly balanced map. Uh, I, I would say ideally Wrecker's Yard probably should have been the blueprint for every single map ever made in this game going forward. However, that has not really been the case. There has just been a lot of really bad maps, and maps have been one of the biggest problems in this game ever since released. Like, forget about perks, forget about all of that, and just the maps have been awful over the years. And it's for a number of reasons that it's unfair. First off, there are just more survivor-sided maps than killer-sided maps. That is just a universally known fact. There are killer-sided maps, but they're far and few between, and it seems like every time they make a new map in this game, it is pretty overwhelmingly survivor-sided, at least in the past year, year and a half. So, we're looking at a game where most of the maps are going to be survivor-sided. Also, there are four times as many people that could possibly burn a map offering. So, as a killer, your map offerings are less valuable. A, because the chance of you getting a map offering that actually benefits the killer that you're playing is way lower than the chance of a survivor getting a map offering that benefits just the survivors in general and that is true so when you as a killer run a map offering you're bringing one map offering to the survivors for 
the survivors can all bring whatever map offering they want and they all each equally hold the amount of weight as yours so say you bring a uh, an auto haven key as an example and they bring a midwitch and an ormond and so on and so forth for some reason all four right you only have a one-fifth shot of actually getting the map that you desire getting because it factors in all of the survivors offerings equally as well and even if you do get that offering you still have to beat four other potential offerings so you're losing in a numbers game because there are just fewer maps that are good for you and you're losing in a numbers game because there are four times as many people that can burn a map offering as well additionally you can burn a sacrificial ward to stop survivors from pushing you onto a map you don't want to go to but and that is true you can run a sacrificial ward however this is very unlikely to happen and this is probably not very well known but if all four survivors bring one specific map offering say you bring a sack ward and all four survivors play midwitch as an example uh that will actually override the sacrificial ward although i don't think you're really ever going to encounter that like i don't think four people are all going to intentionally decide to run one very specific map offering in tandem together expecting the killer to run a sack ward i don't think that's like ever happened it's extremely unlikely but if it's in a strong survivor with friends that's trying to troll you they're probably going to burn four of the offerings which negates the sacrificial ward anyway so even then it doesn't help you and that is true however i don't think i've ever like i could be wrong and i just haven't paid attention i don't think i've ever actually seen like four survivors run the same map offering expecting the killer to burn a sack ward i'm not saying it doesn't happen it very well probably could i just don't personally ever recall it happening to me so we're at a point in the game now where map offerings almost exclusively exist just to fuck killers over and i don't think that's really fair again there are a couple of exceptions we've all gotten the midwitch and Urs, and it's miserable but i'm saying you know 90 percent of the time it's going to be the survivors that are benefiting way more and it's due to the, the simple numbers game there yeah like let's quickly take a look at the maps in the game what what maps are even really considered like killer sided actually out of like all of these maps i would say the only ones that are really like killer sided are uh, and when i say killer sided i mean like fair closest to fair would probably be mcmillan estate auto haven wreckers sometimes cold wind some of the maps are a little eh Dead Dog Saloon, it depends, really. Uh, if people stick around the main building, that main building is one of the strongest main buildings in the game. However, when you discount that main building, it's really not that bad of a map, I would say. And yeah, that's about it. That's all the killer maps that are, like, enjoyable for a killer. Too many bad maps for killer, and there are too many survivors that can burn offerings, so... Yeah. What do we do? I think map offerings should probably have the reverse effect. I think map offerings can stay in the game, but what they will do is ensure that you do not roll the map in the in the map offering so if you burn a larry's offering as huntress you're guaranteed to not go to larry's if you burn you know a rpd offering a survivor you're guaranteed to not go to that map i think so i think that actually would be kind of cool although i do think uh you know it could be like a veto system right like the survivors can each veto a map a piece and the killer can veto maybe two or three I think that would be cool, actually. Maybe they would have to rework the offering system and make that like a, a mainline feature. You know, the killer can veto three maps of their choice and the survivors can veto a map apiece. However, would behavior actually go through and implement something like that? That is a question that I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know anything about game design in terms of like development, right? I'm not a dev. I, I don't I don't work with ones and zeros. I'm not familiar with them. So I can't say how hard that would be to implement, but that would actually be a really cool idea and I'm sure it's been tossed around over the years. Uh, having a, a, v a map veto system would be way better to have that type of system where a killer could block out a potential, you know, really bad map rather than a killer can specifically choose the one map that's actually good for, you know, uh, Scratch Mirror Myers or something like that. And the flip side would work with um, survivors as well. I think that would be a lot safer. The alternative is just remove them entirely. I think they're an outdated mechanic. It's just simply not fair anymore to be able to choose that. And um, I think that would be overall better for the game. Curious to hear what you guys think. I think it's kind of agreed upon at that point that map offering. So another thing about this too is that the maps are so horrendously bad in general that it's oftentimes like basically dev developer sanctioned griefing when you see a map offering pop up. Like when you see a map offering pop up for like RPD and the likes of that or the Borgio or the game as a killer, you know it's going to be a miserable time. Like they're not running that to have a... A super fun match for all sides but that's more so like an issue with horrendous map balance like i'm gonna i'm 
gonna bring up a few maps just as an example. So a lot of maps still to this day have issues with just very, very strong main building God windows, more or less, right? That is the current issue with just so many maps. Now, actually about five years ago or six years, seven years ago when the game came out, a lot of main buildings had windows that were so strong that it would actually take around 30 to 40 seconds of running around the building three times before you actually caught them. Now that has been tapered down a little bit. Like they shortened a lot of the uh, of the former God windows, but a lot of old like uh, like Ironworks window that used to be like a borderline God window. Like you look at it now, it's really not that great. It used to be a absolute God window back in the day. Um, it was basically unchaseable if a survivor ran there and every survivor typically did run there. All right, now let's also talk about another map. We're going to be talking about the Garden of Joy. So there are typically a lot of uh, of, of good just tiles, and the, the main building window is incredibly insane, right? Like, let's say uh, you get shack window here, right? Let's say this is the shack window. This is door one with the pallet, and this is door two, right? You can get a, like, medium tier, like, filler pallet here, right here, into a long wall tile. Right? This is just an example. And there's usually another filler out here. So yeah, this is another filler. This is the middle of the road. Uh, excuse my crude drawing, but this is the middle of the road, right? And then there's another tile over here. There's another filler out here. And then this over here is another tile. And then that leads to the parking area, which is already a pretty good setup as well. That's not even factoring in that they have a main building right here. Really strong main building. With a little deck out there and this is the window let's say this is the uh the, the dining room window right like you run in this is the dining room window this is one of the strongest main building windows still in the game and this is a map that only came out about a year ago like they they still release maps like this this is a greater issue with map design right because you could chase the survivor in here and they also have a window upstairs let's not discount that what they can do is run this window they run in run that window and you pretty much have to chase them around this window three times every single time they will get this window again that's two that's three to entity block the time that you have to sink into that is astronomically high and like there's still windows like this in the game and i don't understand why they have such a huge huge obsession with main building windows like this because every survivor typically every game will have setups like this and let's not even count or let's count the uh, the truck here, right? Let's say that's the truck. The truck tile. That's the garbage. That's the truck right there. That's the pallet. And then there's another fence right here with a pallet in the middle. That's just counting the tiles over here in these general areas. A lot of people will ignore all of these already decent setups out here and run to this god window every chase. When they're not running to this one, up the stairs and out the window up here. This is a prevalent issue with map design that is still plaguing the game to this day. So I think even though like, you know, map offerings in general need to change, the wider issue at hand here is that maps are just so bad, so, so bad that they're basically seen as a griefing tool, more or less. Like when you see somebody run a Garden of Joy map offering, that's, that's basically like griefing, dev sanctioned griefing. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, this was Scott Jun's video. Once again, should map offerings even exist anymore? That was just my take on it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with these opinions and whatnot? Anyway, uh, until next time.